Good. Okay. Well, uh, good evening, everyone. A very warm welcome to you. Uh, my name is James Sarnison, and it's my absolute pleasure to host this fantastic call tonight. And um, we have a wonderful, wonderful guest with us tonight, uh, Jeff Montague Smith. Um, who is an osteopath, he's a, an entrepreneur, he's developing a number of uh, successful businesses, but uh, for our specific interest tonight, he's developing a very, very substantial Juice Plus business. Um, and what's really, really interesting about Jeff is that Jeff, as we know, is a wonderful speaker. Uh, and when he speaks, it's just so interesting. He's got such a fascinating grasp about our product. Um, and, you know, he's so big on the science. He really is really our best uh, speaker in, in, in the UK um, uh, in terms of the product. But... Jeff is also building a very substantial Juice Plus business, as I've just said. So this is really the focus of the call. Uh, you may have heard Jeff speak a lot about the product, but this is not going to be about the product. This is really going to be all about Jeff's business approach. Um, and what is so interesting about him is that because he's so busy, his time management skills um, are really exceptional. So, you know... <clears throat> A lot of people say, well, how am I going to do this business? You know, I'm already so business. Well, Jeff, Jeff is, it is already busy and he's well up to IMD and, and, and well on his way to PMD. So uh, a very warm welcome to you, Jeff. How are you doing? Doing great. Thanks, James. Very well, kind introduction. Appreciate uh, uh, that. <laughs> but it, but it's all true. Believe it or not, it's all true. So um, I think people, first of all, uh, you know, a lot of people will say, well, we know Jeff. You know, we've seen him a lot. But a lot of people perhaps wouldn't necessarily know um, uh, more about your background. So tell us a little bit about your background, first of all. Well, I came straight from school uh, knowing that I wanted to be an osteopath. So I did my A-levels and I went straight to the British School of Osteopathy in London. And there was a four-year uh, course to, to study to become an osteopath. And I came straight out of uni and um, essentially had no alternative but to start my own practice immediately because there just weren't the jobs available um, back then. I had one uh, two-day associateship placement and you know so I came from a family of um, entrepreneurs. My father was a property developer. He, he'd never really been employed beyond the time when he was in his mid-20s. So I grew up uh, with you know, the clear idea that really, I mean, I was pretty much unemployable, I think, actually. So um, I started my practice and within about five or six years, I realized that the straightforward osteopathic practice had its limitations. And I started to extend the scope of my practice, bringing in new studies relative to, uh, you know, how we could prevent disease processes, not just with what we were doing with our manual medicine hands-on but also with nutritional advice and herbal medicines and homeopathics and what we do with our energy medicine using the biofield so for me it became a very integrated process and as a result of that uh, you know I started to get some exposure to some of the concepts that we now work with very very actively in terms of disease prevention so you know it's a very orthodox start and then I kind of morphed into, I guess, this a practitioner now of integrated osteopathic medicine. So it's like naturopathy as well now, really, you know, combining the two together. Fascinating. And, um, you know, I mean, and obviously I know, I mean, I've been a, a you know, a, a client of yours as well, and I know how thorough your whole approach is. I mean, it's amazing. So, Jeff, we know, or, you know, I know that you've been involved with the company before, but you came back again to us. Um, tell us what brought you back. Well, I mean, historically, the, the, I, I, 25 years ago, um, there was a herbalist who presented the business to me when it was water, it was environmental products, you know, water filters and the air products. And they were amazing. because I, I mean, I hadn't drunk tap water since I was eight years old because we'd always had a water filter in our, in our home. And when he showed me that we could use these amazing products and that there was a business model that was about word of mouth referral and being, you know, rewarded for, for helping people to find out about the products, um, I, I just got very, very excited. And I got going and we, we were giving the air products to the kids with asthma and getting great results. And, and that's really where the company was camped out until they launched the Juice Plus product. And we were very, very excited. I had a team back then. Uh, I was heading for QNMD back then. 
And we all went to Dallas, about four of us, the key leaders in my team, and we saw Juice Plus for the first time. And I can't tell you how excited we were. I mean, we, we met OJ Simpson. Um, we had, uh, you know, this amazing experience of seeing what the company had done to get the product, uh, you know, out there. And we came back to the UK with a great deal of excitement and then hit some serious buffers, you know, because back then people didn't really understand the need to supplement their diet. Everyone would say, well, I'm getting enough from my food. Uh, a few people were switching on to the idea of isolated vitamins, but to present them with fruits and vegetables in a capsule was a kind of an alien concept. And they couldn't understand the technology of how the company had managed to do it. So it was difficult, you know. And back then, you know, James, you remember, we didn't have any internet. Uh, we hardly had mobile telephones. We used to have to run all the meetings from hotels, and it was a, it was a, it was a lot of work. So... I decided to back away from the franchise aspect of building a business with Juice Plus because it was literally too difficult to do that alongside being a busy clinician. So that was my decision to, to resign my distributorship. And I just got on working with what we were doing, using the protocols that we were working with. And a big part of the protocols that we were using to help get people better um, involved giving them herbal remedies and homeopathic remedies to cleanse the system and to open up the channels of drainage, right, including the liver and the bowels and the lymphatic system. And what a lot of people don't know about is that back in 2011, there was a change in the law that came through from the European Parliament, largely sponsored by the pharmaceutical industry. And they sponsored a new law to say that all herbal medicines had to be licensed, which I fully support. But they made it so expensive to license these products that it made it almost impossible for the small manufacturers to comply. So it's really the drug companies taking that market by stealth. They're doing the same now with homeopathic medicines. And they're about to initiate what we call safe limits legislation on nutritional supplements. So the amount of uh, you know, vitamin C that you'll be able to get in your supplement is going to be so low that it'll pretty much be ineffective. Mm -hmm. So we've got a situation where the health conscious individual is going to find it very, very difficult to put their hands on quality products. So with all that in mind, and given that one of our other businesses is um, we, we import health products, nutritionals, homeopathics and herbals from Canada, so I became aware of this legislation because it was directly impacting our other business. Um, and the clinic that I have, we were using all of these remedies. So I had to find an alternative for the herbs to get the emunctories open. And that's when I decided to have another look at Juice Plus. Um, I knew that a daily juice cleanse would support the system in many, many ways. And I was so heartened when I looked back at the company and I saw the clinical research that was there. And I was so impressed with the way things had changed. I was impressed with the virtual franchise set up. And I immediately phoned Milan and I said to them that I would like to become a distributor again. And could I sign up with Shay O'Brien because he had been my immediate upline back then. And they kind of laughed a little bit and said, no, that's not possible. And I said, well, I'd really like to meet with one of the uh, local national marketing directors. And that's when they set up a meeting with myself and Nikki Tolson. I was delighted to meet with her. And we got going and we started to grow started to grow the business so that's what brought me back into the business um, and I, I obviously had a certain amount of uh, you know network marketing expertise from my involvement you know 20 odd years prior to that but you're already I mean it's fascinating Jeff you know the angle that you came back in on it from you know which is so much a sort of scientific evaluation I, I absolutely love that but the, the interesting thing is some people are going to be saying well you know you left before because you felt it was going to be too overwhelming to do juice plus but but now you were back in um, and and a lot of people are going to say well you were still very very busy so how did you manage to start fitting all this in with juice plus well um I've got a very capable wife and the fact that I'm married to Helen and the fact that I've got an amazing, remarkable woman to back me up makes it a lot easier. Um, but look, we honestly, we've got, Juice Plus is our fourth business. We've got a, we've got a, 
a multidisciplinary practice in Tunbridge Wells with 10 treatment rooms, 20 odd practitioners. We've got an imports business where we bring these products in from Canada, as I've said. We've got a, a training academy where we teach postgraduate practitioners the clinical methods that we use in our clinic, and we have our Juice Plus business. And what I would say to you is that we work very, very hard. And we're working very, very hard now so that we can be free later. And I would say that we worked extremely hard before Juice Plus, but the freedom that is going to come because of the Juice Plus business is far outweighing anything that we achieved with our other three businesses. That's what's so remarkable about the opportunity with Juice Plus. I immediately recognized that the timing for my re-entry into the business actually could not have been better. Uh, and James, you know, we've now got a situation where we've got technology, like we're using Zoom right now. You know, we've got the ability to record webinars and have them constantly streaming. We've got, you know, at the, the literary push of a button on your mobile device, you can run uh, an international business, place orders, keep up with your teams using WhatsApp and all the different communication uh, you know software packages that we've got so you know we've, we've now got a situation to uh, you know there's no excuse now I mean it is so easy I mean it would not have been possible for me all those years ago but now I can run this business you know literally keeping in touch with everybody and I can do it on a daily basis you just have to be extremely organized you just have to, to really make sure that you've got your your system set up correctly so a lot of look, that's very interesting, Jeff. I mean, so, I mean, obviously they say you know if you want a job done, ask a busy person. So the, interesting, you know, because people's time management skills are so good. But as a lot of people are going to be asking. Well, be fascinating to know what is your DMO? Do you have a DMO? Um, and what do you focus on each day? Well, um, my my, I don't have a clearly written down structured DMO, but, but I make a promise to myself every day to touch my business, to go into my business and add value. So that's the core thing that I like to do. And I always uh, am interested because we all have encounters every single day. And it might not be possible to necessarily talk about the products or the business when you have an encounter with someone um, at that point. But you can set the stage for a conversation that can follow. So you have to be quite structured in terms of you know, how you make a conversation with somebody, what you, you know, you remember what you'd said to them and you kind of, you know, you're, you're, it's almost like you're romancing a lot of people simultaneously. It's like those guys that have got multiple girlfriends. You've got to kind of keep track very carefully about where you're at with everybody. Um, so my DMO is literally, you know, every chance I get, I'm going to add value to their life. And I see adding value as helping them to understand what they can do to prevent disease coming down the line. And a big part of our business, you know, whilst I'm very, very happy that people would, um, you know, go on weight loss programs and they would use our products for weight management, um, the key thing for me is disease prevention. So I'm always looking for opportunities to talk to people about how they can help prevent disease, how they can, uh, you know, live long and healthy lives. And of course, the conversation about what's in our capsules. Uh, it's, that's that's central to that, you know. So I find it very very easy to talk to people. Um, I mean, I use the three foot rule a lot. I actually find it it's almost like a sport for me when I go out to a restaurant. Uh, if the waitress has been really helpful, uh, I use the elevator pitch. Um, you know, I have an elevator pitch where I'll say, you know, I mean, if they if they've made our evening very special, I'll always tip really well. Um, so I always tip like an NMD, even when I wasn't one. And, um, you know, I would say, you know, you're a nice person. You've made our evening really special. Thank you ever so much. You're obviously a people person. And they thank you for that, you know, and you'd, you'd, you'd make them feel good. And then I'd say, you know, I'm with an international franchise development uh, company. And, you know, we're looking for people just like you. And um, I would flatter them a little bit and I would talk to them. And I'd say, you know, it's possible to get your email address or your Facebook uh, you know, we add each other on Facebook and so I'm constantly looking to open up conversations and um, I think if you do that regularly um, I, I, you can't help but grow a business and if you then teach that to the people 
in your team, if everyone duplicates that concept, then of course you're going to grow a very, very strong business. Well, that's fantastic. I just want to say to everyone, if you're online now um, and you haven't muted yourself, I muted everyone at the beginning of the call, but if you could just make sure that you're muted, I'd be so grateful because we've got so many people on the call and the slightest bit of interference is going to upset a lot of people. So if you could just mute yourself, that would be absolutely great. Thank you so much. So Jeff, um, the next question I really want to ask you is about your progress up through the business. So you told us before that you got to the point of QNMD, but then you decided, well, too difficult in a sense because the timing wasn't right. But now here you are as IMD and you're moving up to PMD. And I'm sure you'll be PMD this year. So tell us a little bit about some of the, the skills that you feel you've had to master to really move yourself up. Because a lot of people are going to say, well, I'm sales coordinator, but I feel I'm stuck. Or I'm senior director, I feel I'm stuck. Or, or whatever. So what, what was it that oiled the wheels that got you moving up through, really properly up through the program? I think we, we started to see, we started to see real progress when we, we got the, the simplification aspect sorted out. I mean, we, I identified that, um, I mean, I was already fairly IT savvy, but I identified quite quickly that, you know, obviously this business only works if you've got a duplicatable simple system. I mean, it's got to be so simple an eight-year-old can do it. And I think the key skills that I had to learn were how to be an effective teacher not just, I mean, we're very, very strong on product training. I mean, in our team, anyone that's in the team will know that there are materials available to them which give them an awful lot of information about why the products are so important for, for daily use. Um, so that's, that's absolutely key. So I had to put in place product trainings where they could easily get to those. So what we have is a Facebook page for our team and anyone who joins the team has got access to those trainings. So they're all pre-recorded. Um, we've also had to obviously explain the very simple business model that we have. And, um, you know, we have to teach our new distributors the core skills on how to present the business to somebody in an elegant professional way. Um, so, you know, we have a, a, a napkin presentation, which we teach them to do on a piece of paper for those moments when you don't have your, iPad with you, but we've also got a pre-formatted PowerPoint presentation, which basically gives the general story. You know, it talks about why good health is a challenge. We're in a toxic world. You know, more and more people are getting sick. Here's what the science is saying about what we need to do. And here's what Juice Plus have done as a company to get us out of uh, that difficulty. And here are the products and the cost and then a simple explanation of the marketing plan. So that's um, very easy for someone to sit with a friend and take them through that presentation. And once they've learned those skills, once they've understood where the product is placed and how to have a one-to-one -one meeting with somebody, then they're set to go. So, you know, we, we have a very, very strong focus on teaching, teaching that to people. But, you know, the, the, the key thing in growing a big business is to identify leaders and develop leaders, bring them to the front of the room, get them up there doing the trainings, um, you know, supporting people, constantly uh, challenging them to, to grow and develop. And I think that's, I've been very, very fortunate because I, I have an absolutely amazing team of people around me. I mean, I'm so blessed. Uh, you know, none of this is possible without a strong team. And we are all bonded together uh, as a result of, pre-existing relationships we have a strong passion for the product and the mission and you know that's what we, we're glued together with love trust and respect for each other and I think that's what makes us so so strong and, and you know when people get into our trainings that's what they feel you know, and I would say that because we haven't built the business predominantly on social media um, where we've gone into sort of uh, relationships with people that we didn't know from before there's already that trust and respect pre-existing before people join 
Yeah, so that, that, that's fascinating. So tell us, Jeff, a little bit about your own, uh, you know, I mean, you spoke a little bit about the three foot rule, but tell us a little bit about your prospecting because you've obviously got a very good team. You've got a very good front line of people and I'm sure you're adding to that all the time. But tell us a little bit about where some of these people have come from because some people are saying, well, I haven't sponsored anyone or, or, or I'm really struggling to sponsor. So tell me how that process has worked for you. Well, you know, I'm old school. Uh, I, I learned I learned network marketing from, you know, old school teachers. And I mean, central to what we do when we get someone started is we ask them to write down their, their, their list of contacts, you know, via the memory jogger. Um, so I, I did just that when I started. And I thought, well, who do I know? And I, mean, I guess in a way, because uh, I'm a clinician, I made a few calls to colleagues of mine and you know we're all very busy so before i started making the calls i actually recorded a webinar with me going through the product and the business and i you know i phoned up colleagues and i just said look there's a business idea i'd like to discuss with you um if i sent you a link to a webinar would you have time to watch it and that's how i did it you know so i made a few calls and i've got to say that i probably uh I mean, I've got a large contact list, but I mean, I, I haven't even begun to get into my contact list yet because I would say that the first, the first 20 calls that I made, I think I probably signed up six or seven of those people into the business. I'm a strong believer in sponsoring up. I think if you go to the people who've already got uh, a degree of success, and like you said earlier, if they're hardworking and they're busy people, they're probably the right people to be speaking to. So... Yeah, I sponsored some really good people. And from that came a, a strong team, a good front line. And most of the people that are in my front line uh, were, were already very strong, close friends. So it's nice to get to work with those people. So yeah, no, I, I, I think that's fantastic, Jeff. And I love your thing about the webinar, because obviously when they see the webinar, it's you and they're used to you. They're familiar with you. And so there's an immediate connection. I, no, I, yeah. I, I absolutely love that. So the next thing I just really wanted to talk to you about really was the whole issue about team building because this is, you know, you've talked about, oh, I've got a wonderful team and, and, and I've seen you with your team and I can see that there's a tremendous closeness between you all and a real sense of camaraderie. But I really wanted to ask you, has that skill come naturally to you or do you feel that it's something you've had to learn and, and, and what do you particularly do to help foster and build that sort of team element that you've got? Um, well, I think, I think the thing that we've, we've got that glues us all together, as I said, is this sense of purpose, this buying into the, the mission firstly and it's all about i mean you know look we can make some money at this business but you know what what's more important is we can change lives and i think everyone's on side with that because they know that that's what my prime mover is um i i keep regular contact with my leaders i'm always making calls deep into the team i think that's one major tip is that you know when you do have those moments I mean, I've got more time now to build deep into the team. I mean, what I started with my initial prospecting using webinars, James, because I literally only had two to three hours a week to, to get this thing rolling. And what I would say is that when I was starting out, um, there was one leg in my business where I had tremendous upline support from Nikki and Birgit. You know, they did an amazing job, uh, you know, supporting the growth of, of the team, which was tremendously helpful so you know we've always had this example of upline support and that's what filters down you know through the whole business and I would say that you know in terms of of how you build a strong team it's, it's literally you just get people to keep it simple you know the more simple you keep it um, and the more you make it possible for people to to log in you know that initial two hours a week that I had I had to be very strategic and careful but then I had to devote more time and then you know we had to have regular trainings and then I had to offer them a regular business opportunity meeting in a local hotel because we built local first I mean, it's gone into 14 countries now but we built very local and very strong and, and around that business opportunity meeting in Tunbridge Wells and now we're starting to look at you know opportunity meetings in London I, I, I realized it was important to have that regular fixture in place for the team and it's swelled to the point now where we're, we're very well attended every month uh, on that. So, you know, the thing is duplication is the key. 
Uh, we've got to have simple processes in place and we've got to have a very clear respect for what we're doing with our product and our business model. And then really the relationships come out of that because you know when everyone's having fun and everyone's having success, you're hugging each other, you're getting to know people, uh, you, you, you love spending time with, with, with the people that you're working with. And the nice thing is if, it, if it's immediately um, coming from people's close relationships and contacts to start with, then everyone's friends anyway. Yeah, no, I, I, I think that's fantastic. And, and um, you know, that's, that's music to my ears, you know, because I absolutely love that element of the business of, of, of having the meetings and, and getting together with everyone. Um, just to say that we're sort of moving up to the point where we're going to move into Q&A with Jeff um, at, at nine o'clock. Uh, so I've got some questions I can see that are coming up on the chat uh, line, some very interesting ones. But um, if you've got any particular question you want to be asking Jeff, then um, please put those in the chat box down the bottom and that'll come up at the side there. And I'll do my best to ask those questions of Jeff and get through everything. Um, Jeff, one other question that I think people are going to be very interested in is what are the key components that you see for getting someone started? Um, I mean, I know you've already spoken about yeah. this, but, but what are some of the key things that you go, right, we've got to have this in place for this person, for them to really make a good start? It is a really good question. I think it's really important because if someone doesn't get a good start, then they get disillusioned and they get paralyzed with fear. And, you know, and, and honestly, that's taken us a bit of time to get that sorted. Um, but I think the main thing is we've got a very, very clear, you know, what we call a cycle of success that we plug people into. Um, so as soon as, as soon as one of our team starts talking to a prospect, we invite that team member to put their prospect into the team Atman secret group so they can start to get tagged on a few of the essential things. And there's an awful lot of information in there. So we have a page that serves as a training tool for the established distributors, but it's also a prospecting tool because you can bring someone in on the basis of that, you know, I don't know if this business is for you or not, but you know, I'd be very happy to add you to the secret page that we use for our team. And that way you can have a kind of a sneaky look behind the scenes. And you know, if it turns out not for, not to be for you, don't worry, we can just delete you from the group once you've decided that you don't want to join us. So it's a very, very relaxed and low key uh, way to show somebody what we're doing. They also get a certain amount of social proof that the business is working because we, we see people doing well, we see good results, we see promotions coming through, they see the quality of the training materials that are there, and they know that they're not going to be alone. Um, so once they've decided that they are going to join, we then take them through a very clear structure. So we invite them to do the memory jogger, and we'll explain to them that they don't have to bring any capital investment into the business. The only capital that they bring into the business is the network of contacts that they have. And then we're going to qualify the list very, very specifically, looking for people who have a clear and obvious product need. So that would be, you know, you would suggest they would look at the health issues for that particular person and, and maybe recommend them to have a look at Juice Plus. And then we're going to look at the people who could use a, a business opportunity if they're, you know, not getting enough holidays or incomes tight um, and then so we're going to qualify the list and figure out very strategically how we're going to approach those uh, that new distributors hot list and their warm market and they're going to get that support with their with their upline and typically we want to organize a launch event for that new person so that would either be an in-home meeting or we would do a zoom presentation with an experienced upline supporting that call so the new person would qualify their list, they would invite their contacts into a Zoom call or an in-home event, and the experienced upline would be running that meeting for them. So they're teaching the new person how to do this correctly uh, in a non-threatening and elegant, comfortable way. Um, now, I mean, we've had, there was a lady, an older lady, one of the mums of our distributors who joined recently, they did an in-home event, and she had 25 people at the event, and she went senior direct distributor in five hours you know, with the orders that came from that event. So, you know, when it, when it moves, it moves really quickly. So, you know, the key things for the new person are to get plugged into the system and up to the point of senior direct distributor level to be teachable, you know, to use the system 
and allow the upline to guide them. And, you know, we've got, as I said, very, very good leaders in the team and emergent leaders that are coming through. I, I'm, so, I'm so excited for, for, for where we take this over the next months and, and next couple of years because I can really see how, you know, the, the setup is there. And we've learned a lot from other teams as well. You know, we've taken, we've taken the best of what old school can offer and the best of what we can do with the new methods using social media and so forth. And we've, not, we've learned from the mistakes that people have made with social media and we've, as a team, decided to try not to do that. Um, and, and that's been key, you know. So that's how we get a new person started and they get results. So they're going to get to SDD quickly, hopefully, and then they're going to get their bonus and then they've got a story and then that amplifies and, uh, you know, propagates the, the process of team growth. Fantastic. Well, Jeff, look, we're just after nine. So, um, I mean, the, the, there's, I think you've already dealt with the question I was going to ask you is how do you see the potential of our business in the next three to five years? But perhaps you could just talk about that in a little bit, a little bit about oh how my God, I mean, it's, I, I'm, I'm just so grateful that four or five years ago, I, I got reacquainted with the company. I partnered with them again because, I mean, I'm, I'm constantly surprised at the new stuff that's coming. I mean, you know, it, it was good enough with just the Juice Plus product range, but we've got, you know, we've got new products coming. The Omega Oil product I'm massively excited about. Some of you will know that we've been uh, invited to try the Tower Garden over here, and I've got my seedlings growing just over there, and they're looking good. Um, we've got new markets opening. Uh, I was it's really excited to be in Phoenix with uh, Gordon and James and a few of the others, you know, Georgina and, and a few of the other people that were there because we got to hear how the company are going to take a little bit more control of brand protection. They're going to be on top of the whole social media thing. So, you know, when you get to the bigger conferences in America, you can see the clear corporate structure that's there, the vision they have for the future. And this thing is going to be, I mean, we literally will be global I would say within the next five years, I'm I'm ridiculously excited, and I, you know, we haven't even we haven't even started yet, and that's what I constantly tell my guys. Uh, you know, I know it's a bit of a cliche to say the best is yet to come, but it really is, um, and I I just I don't know the timing just couldn't be better. I mean, you know, if I was a new starter right now, with the simplicity and, and the system that's in place, if you do this intelligently and elegantly. And you, you go after what I would call uh, more, if you sponsor up and you work with people who are the right caliber of person, it's unlimited, the possibility here. Good. Well, Jeff, I think that's what we all feel. I mean, um, and it is unbelievably exciting. Um, and I mean, I can say that after, you know, obviously after I've, you know, I've been in for 28 years, but let's just go on now and let's just get into the questions because uh, there are some very interesting questions that have come through now. Um, so needless to say, people are going to be interested about um, other um, practitioners that you've brought in. Um, Sue Worrell asks, have you signed up other osteopaths into your business and were they open to the product and the business opportunity? Uh Yes, I've signed up other practitioners and the answer is no, they weren't open to it. But you have to kind of, and James was talking about this on a call that we had where with PTs, you know, uh, look, we've all got to, we've all got to realise that um, healthcare practitioners, that's a hard nut to crack, you know, and you've got to really know what you're doing if you want to go and approach a healthcare practitioner. And I mean, I found it difficult and I'm difficult to say no to. Um, because I know, I know how to approach somebody, I know how to talk to them, and I still find it difficult. So I think we just have to agree that there's going to be a healthy scepticism from the standpoint of practitioners, largely because there are so many uh, network marketing companies out there who are telling their people to go after the healthcare practitioners. So, um, you know, I mean, it's, it's not uncommon to be approached. I mean, I was saying the other day, actually, that in four years of being in the Juice Plus business, I'd only ever had one other person approach me with a network marketing concept, and that was a magnet company. So I, it actually surprised me how I'm not being approached, uh, you know, a little bit more. But it's true to say that when, when you talk to healthcare practitioners, there's a, there's a degree of scepticism. And this is why it's so lovely to have the science. Because once you've worked out how you can explain this virtual franchise to somebody, 
and you can say that we have an evidence base for the products. And we have a very, very clear and uh, simple system now with the virtual franchise, which is timed for today's business world. You know, once they've actually taken a proper look, if you can get someone to have a proper look, uh, and this is where our Facebook page is helpful because we can bring someone into that and they can have a nose in their own time, tag them on a few things and leave them to make their mind up while they experience a certain amount of social proof in what they're seeing. So the answer is yes. Uh, we've got a large number of practitioners in the team. Uh, our team is not mainly practitioners. I always enjoy it when, uh, you know, practitioners come to us um, uh, I would say that now my social media presence, which was never that great, so I didn't really get social media, but um, I've had one osteopath recently, a lovely guy called Dan, who spotted what I was doing on Facebook, saw me commenting a little bit in an osteopathic forum, and he made contact and said, could he join our team? You know, So it's starting to get to the point now where people are asking me if they can join me, which is, which is lovely. But um, it's a hard nut to crack, you know, and you have to know what... Just like James said with the PTs, if you're going to tread into that space, tread carefully and be prepared. You've got to know what you're doing. You know, you've really got to know what you're doing. Okay, good. Well, I hope that answers some of the other questions that have come in also about talking to practitioners because there is there are a couple others, but I think we'll venture into something else now. Um, so, uh, yeah, someone else, uh, Emma. Penrose uh, asks, what if your team leader doesn't guide you? Are there any other tips to get to senior direct distributor? Some people may say, you know, my upline is hopeless. <laughs> they, you know, they've dropped out and I don't even know the people above me. You know, what would you say to someone that is really keen to move forward, but they just feel they haven't got the upline support that they would like? Okay, so there's always an upline that will support you. You just phone the company and you reach up and up and up and up until you find an upline that will support you. Um, because even if you've got three or four rubbish uplines, you know, there's always going to be someone that will have the, look, when people come into my business and when I see rising stars deep in the business, I drive deep into the business to work with those people. And any leader that knows about how network marketing works will understand that that's what you do. Even if you're working outside of your pay line, and we've had that example in our business with Birgit and Nikki. They're always driving deep, way below their pay line. And that's what we teach our people. So if you're in a situation where as a, as a dealer or direct, senior direct, and you're really not getting the support, you need to phone the company and find out, you know, look at who your upline national marketing director is and make a lot of noise. Tell them that you're going to be massive in this business. Shout loud and get their support because they will come to your side. And if not, then you just have to look for sideline support, you know, because it's there. You know, we're all a brotherhood and a sisterhood in this thing. You know, we're all here for each other. And, uh, you know, our meetings are open. You know, we have a meeting in Tunbridge Wells. I don't, I don't make that exclusive to Team Atman uh, distributors. It's open, you know. So uh, you can always go and get the help. You just have to, just have to reach up for it. <clears throat> Jeff, sometimes, you know, people take a long time to get going. I mean, we've had, I think we had a call a little bit ago where someone had got to PMD um, and they hadn't been able to sponsor anyone for six months. Or they, I don't think they could get a customer for six months. Yeah. Um, and now they're up at PMD. So, you know, some people do get very disillusioned. I mean, some people get an amazing start. Some people get a very, very slow start. Um, I know my slow start was pretty slow. Um, but I could see the potential and I, I, I had the dream. But what would you say to people that are like, well, they feel like they're really struggling. I mean, what, what would you say to that person? That's all part of the test. I mean, that's normal and that's business. I mean, I, when I graduated as an osteopath and I opened my doors, um, I sat there growing bonsai trees for, for two years, waiting for patients to come. I mean, it was, you know, it was probably two years before I was seeing any more than 12, 13 people a week. Um, now, when you've studied for four years and you've opened a practice and spent a load of money to get going and start a business, you don't quit after, after six months. You keep going. You, you get the skills. And, you know, in any other business, if you opened a retail outlet and you, you borrowed money from the bank and, you, you know, you, let's say you open a shoe shop, you got the shoes in, you know, no one came. You wouldn't just shut the door and go home and, and cry into your pillow. You, you'd, you'd make the thing work, you know, and I think this is, uh, you know, a common story where people, 
people who come from an employed situation are used to being coin operated. You know, they turn up, they, you know, they, they show up for work, they get paid. Uh, in this business, it's like self-employed business in any other respect. What you get paid on, you know, basically, if you do the work this year, you're going to get paid on it next year or the year after. That's just the way it goes. And my first check was 35 quid. It was ridiculous. You know, I mean, I, I understood that it was going to take time. And with this business, it's like compounding. You know, the checks will get bigger as the exponential growth happens. And, you know, if you're not recruiting anybody, it's because you haven't developed your skills at recruiting people or you're not using your upline to support you. If you're not able to make sales and find customers, it's because you've not developed the skills to make sales and find customers. So that takes a little bit of time. And with our business, you know, it's good that we can earn while we learn. You can't learn this business from reading a book. The only way you can learn this business is to go out there and roll your sleeves up and, and get in the trenches. And, you know, what I would say is that there's no other business where, I mean, what we have done in, in, in four years, my wife and I, I mean, Helen has a, a Q&MD business now. You know, we, this is like a pension for us. It was always seen as a, as a pension. In three to four years, we've done the equivalent of develop an asset which is equivalent to two million pounds in cash invested at 3%. That's what we're getting out of this business every month. But where else can you work part-time for sort of four years and end up with that kind of income? In terms of, you can't, there's nowhere else where you can find that. With no staff, no premises, no stock, no bank loans, set up costs. I mean, it's, it, all you're going to risk is the time that it's going to take you to get this thing moving and, and the time that it's going to take you to be a student of network marketing and our products and to fall in love with both and then share it with everybody. I mean, it's, it's ridiculously simple. Fantastic, Jeff. Well, I don't think that we could possibly end on a better note. I mean, really, you know, the way you put yourself across to this evening is absolutely outstanding. And uh, we're very, very grateful for you uh, coming onto the call tonight, because I think it's fascinating to hear you speak from a business standpoint, because so often we're hearing you talk expertly and uh, very eloquently about the product. But tonight we've had a really, really interesting call with you. And uh, I can see exactly why you're becoming so successful. It's, it's so much to do, as you said, with to do with the persistence, but it's also to do with the systems. Uh, it's to do with the perseverance. Um, yep, it's to the love in your team, the com camaraderie, a lot of lovely wonderful component so thank you very much by the way tonight's call is going to be recorded so give me a chance and i shall put that on youtube and then we will uh, I'll, I'll get that out to everybody on on facebook um just a couple of events just very quickly coming up uh, tomorrow evening we have a fantastic event uh, called the amazing power of plants uh, which is a, a lecture which is being run by peter pure and that's at whole food supermarket i uh, believe it or not in a room upstairs uh, in kensington high street and uh, that's a wonderful view on the power of plants, and particularly, obviously, the power of plants that we have uh, in Juice Plus. Excellent for customers, excellent for people uh, who are looking at the product. Um, and that will be a wonderful evening. And we also, afterwards, will go across the piano bar and have some fun over there. So that, that will be great. And then next uh, Tuesday, uh, we're starting a getting started training, a, a, a PMD getting started training on the Savvy Call on a Tuesday night. And that will be at 8.30. And uh, PMD James Knight will be doing that. So that will be something very exciting. So thank you, everyone, very much indeed. Thank you, Jeff. You are thank amazing. You. I love your TV studio. <laughs> well, James, it's been a pleasure tonight. Thank you for inviting me onto the call. Oh, wonderful. Great, great. Have a wonderful evening. Take care. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Good night.